lights are on and we are underway we are racing and it looks like it's a good start there from philip koenig it's koenig that leads the way some two and three wide further back in the field as everybody picks their way through the corners but it's koenig that leads from chris vasiliov as with gt3 cars in the real world scenario of course there is some ABS and traction control to play with, but you don't want to rely on it too much. That's not the quickest way around the course. Even in these conditions, some bumping and barging further back in the midfield as everyone tries to get it stopped as we ride on board with Vladislav Shopov going through the first few kinks of the lap and a big move up the inside there. Full, full commitment. This, of course, is turn four. I miscounted on the previous lap, but this is turn four of the lap that they're just going through now trying to find his way through trying to pick his way past the number three and to the inside goes georgie ratchev for second place catches chris Vasiliev there with the inside open and moves up into second place riding from behind here with georgie ratchev the bulgarian racer that was a big lunge from third play or two third place in the corner you know what, I think he's managed to make that work. He's still got the inside line, but a traction advantage seemingly there momentarily for Chris Vasiliev. They go side by side through the final corner. And yes, Vladislav Shopov looks like he's going to make it work. He's got the inside for turn one. I can't imagine Vasiliev holding on around the outside at the first corner, but great respectful racing between both of them as they cross the line to begin lap three. Shopov on the inside, Vasiliev on the outside. I think Vasiliev knew he had to yield there, and he does so. Very handy driving there from Vladislav Shopov. I thought he went far too deep. Martin M. Sampson is up to 31st. Does look like he's got some damage on the front of that car, though. So he's been in amongst it a little bit. See the Manti colours there on the 911. Bozidar Andreev, and was that a car recovering there from a moment just ahead of him? I think it could have been Stefan Bastanjev to the inside and moving up to ninth position. Handily done there from Bastanjev, and that was a little bit of a block pass, I think, there. Just uh, slowed down at the apex, a little bit of contact between them, but Bastanjev then moving up to ninth position. Make their way up through turn four. And the number 30, Varbanov, oh, just lost it on his own right in front of the Porsche. Quite well avoided there. I'm Yankov just pursuing uh, Paravanov. Koenig, who is racing for German Sim Racing. At the front of the order, the... Battle for, I believe this is fourth in AM, goes off here. Yankov with the outside line around the sweeper, but then into nine and ten, he should have the inside. Can he get by the 24? That was down there. Nicely done. Pass Par uh, Parvanov there for 18th and should be able to hold it around the outside, particularly in these wet conditions. Oh, goodness me. A bit of contact, but they make it work. And indeed, Yankov passed Forjanovsky. Vasil Yekov and Daniel Markov are fighting out for fifth position while this is going on. And it was just using too much, expecting too much from the rear tyres there. than he should have been. Here is that battle I was talking about between Markov and Yekov. Yekov on the inside then in the Audi, trying to get up to fifth place. Going very, very much towards the inside. He's going to have a very tight angle to get around the corner. Too tight of an angle, as it turns out. He aquaplanes straight on, and that allows Ventislav Rachinov to move up. Rachinov, who is our AM class leader, is up to sixth position overall. Now they're fighting it out for second overall as... Svetinov there goes straight on. Ventislav Rachinov to the inside here of Markov. So Markov uh, almost losing out there. 
to our 23 driver Rachinov, who appears to be a man on a mission in fifth position here just pursuing Chris Vrasiliov but moreover <laughs> under a lot of pressure from Venceslav Rachinov in the negative at Delta SRT entry and our AM class leader has a nose ahead and this time he's later on the brakes into turn one as well all but not great traction out of the corner Regardless, though, he is up into fifth place, so Daniel Markov gets demoted. And Yekov in a fight there with uh, Pavel Ivanov, and Ivanov has just gotten past him for ninth place. This, though, could be the move from Vladislav Shopov. He got a great run through the final corner. He's got the inside line. He's got a headlight ahead in the Porsche on the inside line as they run down towards the first corner. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Rachev? Is it going to be Shopov? Rachev drifts wide at turn one. And now tries to cut to the inside line at turn three. Oh, goodness me. A bit too close for comfort there. Vladislav Shopov just squeezing Rachev out of the inside line. But it is Vladislav Shopov then up into second place. This Yekov trying to find his way back into ninth place. Goes side by side with turn four there with... Uh, Ivanov, very respectful driving. They both got through there without contact. Uh, behind them, I think that is, uh, it was Viveki, but he just had a moment. The Automech Porsche in the background there in a spin has damage. He's got uh, his splitter missing. So he's going to have a, a downforce uh, handicap. He's come into pit lane, I believe, as you'd expect. As side by side here. Oh, who was the big gainer? As we get a replay here. This is Philip Koenig. Oh, Koenig dropped down as well. I didn't spot that Philip Koenig was involved. Lap number one was Janowski, who started 23rd and is already up in 10th place. Here's Koenig making up positions further back, going through and past the number 10 Ferrari. And so the winner of the earlier race is having to do a catch-up game here. Or is this a replay of the actual collision? Oh, this is a replay of another incident, actually. So Alexander Nikolov in the number 10 ended up. Vosidar Andreev is right there behind Vasil Yekov. Oh, Yekov with a bobble there coming out of the corner. Yekov just had to catch a slide, I think. And that has allowed Andreev through into the lead. Andreev from Yekov, from Markov, your top three. But here comes Pavel Ivanov. Ivanov, who started in second place, trying to get back onto the podium positions. He can't do it there. Andreev strayed very wide at the first corner as well. Of course, he has to make sure he doesn't do that too much. Yekov is really starting to struggle now. He's down to third place behind Markov. The Audi is starting to hemorrhage positions. Here goes... Ivanov passed him as well. He's got the inside line for turn five as well, Pavel Ivanov, in the VIP racing entry. So I think that's a position gained. Yes, third place to Ivanov. The Porsches looking very, very strong indeed. It is ten Porsches. That tells you a lot. Svetanov in 13th place then. Our standings. We've got a spin there from one of the Lamborghinis and also a tag there from Pavel Ivanov. Ivanov was on the inside, and Markov leaned on him. So Vasil Yekov now with an opportunity to try and get back to the inside of Ivanov, but he can't quite take it. Oh, and away into the pit lane has gone Markov. Markov there got taken out. Now, was that a DQ? Was that a disconnect? I don't know. But let's get a look at why the lead changed. Now, he got onto the curbs, getting ready to turn into the right-hander, and just the rear letting go. We've seen that already a few times at that very corner during this event. And this time, it cost the leader dearly. Pavel Ivanov, your new race leader. But it's side-by-side side for the lead at the moment as we come back to live pictures. And Andreev again with a spectacular run out of the final corner. So Ivanov must have had to catch a slide a bit like uh, Yekov did 
a couple of laps ago is fighting for fifth place uh, with the number six. The negative Delta SRT machine having to uh, defend here against the number three. At turn two. Ivo Serafimov trying to find his way past uh, Parvanov just ahead in this battle for 22nd place. Yeah. The reason that he is now down into 16th place. Oh, and actually, no, it was a bit deeper than that. It was the number three of Rachev that spun. And while everyone tried to take avoiding action, Anton Stratiev got tagged. Now, we saw Stratiev falling through the order while we were looking at uh, Bozidar Andreev's moment. So that's what happened there. Oh, and a spin for the BMW. Philip Koenig in... 14th position, just going past our AM class leader for P13 overall. So, Vodinitrov is having a pretty strong run here. Another driver who's made good progress through the field in this race is Boyko Shopov. He's up 10 positions from 20th to 10th place. Let's see if Rostislav Kochev can make use of that very, very good run through the final corner. He's got the inside line. He's got the high ground against Janowski here. He's pulling alongside. Uh, Janowski still has a nose ahead. And sure enough, that is enough to retain the lead in this battle. Vodinicharov fairly clear. He's just been overtaken on circuit there by the... 30, well, not by the 32 Lamborghini. That is a Stefan Bastangiev back out there after many laps in pit lane. So Bastangiev is out there. Some of the recovering pro drivers fighting through. Oh dear. Doyanov there tagging the uh, Castrol Ferrari. You heard that correctly. Castrol Ferrari. Um, Asen Dramaliev. And that was down at turn five. One of the pinch points of the circuit. Quite the uh, unique combination of colours and car, that. The Castrol livery, dual Ferrari, and that is a combination of carbon fibre, virtual carbon fibre, but no less painful to watch. And recovering in front of everybody there. Dramaliev there, if you gain it, but that's more than enough to be worthwhile. Just ask Parvanov, that was a big dive there for 19th place up against Vladislav Stefanov, and ultimately that's allowed the Lamborghini of Yulian Dimitrov to go past both of them at once. Zilyov, Georgie. We ride on board with Ivanov in second place. Of course, this is the unenviable position to be in here. You've got to spend your time studying to find a way past the leader, but you've also got to not fall into the clutches of Zilyov while you're at it. So often you see someone in this situation make a lunge for the lead and end up a distant third place. Stand and see how to modulate the throttle, how to keep the car out of the traction control, how to find traction in general in these wet conditions. It seems like Ivanov is particularly strong there through the middle of the lap. Very fast indeed. Now into turn 12. Here is Vladislav Shopov around the outside of Vasil Yekov here for fourth position. The negative Delta SRT machine around the outside. Drag race to the final corner. I think the Porsche is going to have this one made unless Yekov can have a very good run through the final corner. He's on the inside line. And there's just a bit more adhesion to find on the outside in these conditions. And that allows Shopov through into fourth position. And will that dissipate quick enough? Oh, that's a big moment for Kochev. Another one of those moments that we've seen so much of on these slippery painted sections there. You don't want that. Here we see a replay of the 32. That's Bastangiev again having a moment. And Bozidar Andreev with... Pavel Ivanov still welded to his mirrors. And, oh, goodness me, again, Andreev, he likes the wide line. I think he does that with some level of intention. But 
It does leave that inside open. And often, when you're racing, you shouldn't leave that open. You shouldn't uh, leave the opportunities there. People will kick the door down and go through it. Into the pits comes our leader. Andreev is the first of the front runners to make a pit stop. 23 minutes into this race. Pit stop around 48 seconds. Here comes our leading cars. And you see there Ivanov and Krizilov, uh, or <laughs> Vrazilov, sorry, both coming in. So Chris Vrazilov and Pavel Ivanov both in. Vasil Yekov joins them as Vrazilov comes back out onto the circuit. Where is the 911 car? It's gone through. So the Grello car, the Manti colours, continue to lead the way. It looks as if they've lost a little bit of time to the aggregate race leader. Ofsky is running in second place at the moment because he is yet to make a pit stop as we take a look here at uh, Lazar Katsarski. Oh, and just as we cut to him, he has a moment. Someone sent the cameras. Um, if I, if Elo Dimitrov has uh, lost some of his front end, in fact, he's lost all of his front end. If you've ever wanted to take a look at what goes on under the uh, canopy, the front end of a Ferrari 296, well, just ask... Uh, Ivelo Dimitrov, that car is uh, looking rather second-hand. Doesn't seem to be handling too poorly. Obviously, will be a bit understeery, but it's not the end of the world just yet. Georgi Tanisov in seventh place. As you can see, fighting here with Yankov in sixth position. Yankov may well have to yield here if... Tanisov can find the inside line into 9 and 10, but he can't do it. He gets offered the outside and nothing more. Vasil Yekov is behind them in the Audi, and of course he was in the top five prior to the pit stop window, so he's lost out. So Tanisov there on the gravel has slowed himself down and put himself into the clutches of Vasil Yekov. It is Bozidar Andreev, your race leader. Second place is Chris Vrazilov. Vladislav Shopov in third place and Pavel Ivanov fighting him for that position. Philip Koenig through the window as we see Stratiev moving up into 15th place. He's a bit and is now working his way back up. Koenig in fifth place. Yekov now getting through into seventh behind Atanas Atanasov in sixth. So Martin Yankov down from sixth to eighth. In the I just wonder if he's moved on to slick tyres because... That pit stop must have taken longer. Here comes Rachev going past the 29, and that looked very easy. So has Rachev gone on to slicks? The poise of that car and the way he's uh, attacking the course with Cop. Well, never mind. <laughs> I think he was on slicks, and he just tried to accelerate on a painted kerb. And unfortunately, you see the end result for Georgi Rachev. That's a huge shame for him. I laugh only because of how quickly my words bit back against him. Unfortunately, I think he may well have been on slicks, but the uh, traction was not underneath Georgi Rachev in the slightest there. Side by side between Yekov and Koenig. Koenig, I think, has lost out there. He was, wasn't he? He was in fifth place. He's now down a position. What was his last lap, Philip Koenig? It was a 150.002. So, no, it wasn't a slow lap, was it? So, I think maybe Yekov just getting past there on sheer pace. Now, Yekov was one of those drivers that did lose some time, and I wonder if he has switched onto slicks. Andreev has lost the lead. Vladislav Shopov, then, is your race leader. Andreev was under threat. Andreev is now in second place. The man is down to P2 as we get a look at uh, Svetanov. Just trying to turn in at turn three with his tyres on the slippery curbing. It is out there. The drivers 
of the Sim Gear Premier League are really having to work at the moment. In 10th place here is Kochev. Small, everyone within the same 10 or 15 second range. Here comes Yekov, who is clearly, I think, on the slick tyres because he has a lot more pace. He is going a lot quicker than those around him. Yekov is up to fourth place. And what's his lap time? A 146.7 versus 151s for the two cars ahead of him. I think some of them have braved those slick tyres and those that did have really started to move their way up and just watching the timing screen as some of the other cars fight further back for Stangiev uh, just ahead of Boyko Shopov down in 10th place Yekov was two seconds behind third place about just moments after getting by uh, for fourth place he is on the move also on the move just going through there was uh, Kochev oh, well that's Bostangiev again isn't it going past he's I think maybe after some fastest lap points and saving a bit of face. We also saw in the background there that um, the 11 car seemed to be on the move a bit as well. In fact, no, that was a 31, sorry, of Boyko Shopov. Vasil Yekov is up to third place, though. This is what I was expecting to see. Yekov very, very quickly closing in. A 34 Porsche behind is not a, a factor, of course. That is the recovering Roy Vivek. A Tanisov fighting here with Koenig for sixth place. I think Koenig is one of those who stayed on the wet tyres. A Tanisov comes by then. He moves up to P6. Lap of the race just came in from our leader as Georgi Rachev presses on past the AM lead battle and the AM lead battle looks very tasty actually back there and in AM under contest there that was uh, Vodinicharov and Milchev fighting out for second in AM and Atanasov oh dear you don't want the rear to lead you into the corner but that's exactly what Atanasov had there oh gosh again you've just got to try and keep it on the black stuff as stupid and simple as rudimentary as that sounds the Curbs, the paint, the last bits to dry, the last bits to grip up. Natanasov losing time there, dropping down to seventh place. But I was just saying about Shopov's pace. He's in the 144s out there. I love that Bastanchev just keeps showing up to fly past people as well as he's several laps down after his collision at lap one. You see Vasil Yekov's car is certainly not tidy either. There's some damage to the rear of that thing. But he doesn't care. He's moving it. He's using it to move up into third place here. Around the outside goes Yekov. He's going to be careful putting the traction down. And he was very nicely done up into third position for Yekov. Now with the pace of Shopov, who is some 14, and never mind, 18 seconds ahead of second place. I don't think Yekov can close in on him. But we're seeing firsthand here that the slick tyres are undoubtedly the way to go right now. Koenig dropping down to seventh place now. What a race he has had, moving up the order, down the order. Started 10th, ended up basically at the rear after a collision on the first lap. Got back up into the top five and is now falling through again as everyone on the correct tyres just flies past. Atanasov gets past the 27. Pavel Ivanov, who lest we forget was leading the way or fighting for the lead at the very least before the pit window but he decided not to make the stop those who made longer pit stops to move on to the slick tires are now seeing it go in their favor Kochev goes past Koenig and behind him is the uh, recovering 11 car now that's another car that's several laps down I did think previously it was fighting for position but Julian Janowski down in 24th place so he's not a factor in the battle in the top 10, unfortunately. We have had a very dramatic mixed conditions race here, and we are into the final 90 seconds of it. Here is the battle for second place. Here is Bozidar Andreev, the inside line beckoning for Vasil Yekov. Yekov made that look very, very easy. He started on pole position, so he may feel 
like there was a missed opportunity in there somewhere, but this has been a very strong second half of the race for Vasil Yekov to move up into second place. The final lap of the race is the one that has been started by our leader, Vladislav Shopov, who is some 23 seconds clear now at the front of the order. Big moment there for Vrasilyov, who loses out there to one of the Lamborghinis that's further back. And you can see here, even the cars that are a lap down are just firing past some of our fastest drivers in the league. Purely because of tyre choice. Kochev gets through into sixth place here at the expense of Pavel Ivanov. Philip Koenig is closing in on Ivanov as well, albeit both of them on the unfavoured treaded tyres. Podium in the very last gasp of this race here. But Vladislav Shopov, all on his own, in amongst the lap traffic, made the right call at the right time to move on to the slicks, has been a lot quicker to adapt to the slicks than anybody else. The only driver in at the top 10 who's hit a 1 minute 44 lap time out there. It has been a masterful wet to dry display for Vladislav Shopov who comes around the final corner now to win the first feature race of season 8. The Simgear GT3 Premier League. And while that's been going on there have been changes further back because uh, Philip Koenig is now ahead of Bozidar Andreev. Andreev has dropped down as far as 7th place so he's had a moment there on the last lap, I think. It'll be Vasil Yekov across the line in second as Svetanov goes side by side there with Martin Yankov for eighth place. A few drivers have lost positions on this final lap. Around the outside now comes Svetanov. He will take eighth position then. Yekov has already crossed the line in second. Kochev third. Brazilio fourth. Ivanov rounding out your top, half, uh, top five ahead of Koenig. And I think that for the 9-11 in particular, this is going to be a very sore race. Bozidar Andreev ultimately only in seventh. Now, where is the AM class battle Overall, next? It? Where is our AM battle? There it is. And it's going to be a change, is it, at the very end of the race? Parvanov across the line. He was the AM, place, uh, AM class second place car, was he not? Bozidar Paranov. Well, Parvanov, sorry, has gotten past there for 15th position. Last turn of the race. Ivelo Dimitrov with a slightly fixed car. Only slightly, I will hasten to add. Milchev has had a moment right at the end of the race too. Just getting to the flag in these treacherous conditions has proven to be too much for a few of them, including... Ivo Samafiov, who eventually decides, you know what, I don't need the checkered flag. I'm going in. I need a drink. <laughs> and I think a few of them might be partaking after that race. It was uh, certainly a tricky, tricky race for all parties concerned in those kind of conditions.